sodium metal is heated until it melts and just begins to burn. Then it is immersed into the yellow-green chlorine gas. The sodium begins to burn in chlorine with an intense yellow flame. It produces a white smoke of sodium chloride. We are observing the exothermic reaction of sodium metal with chlorine gas, producing the white solid sodium chloride. Afterwards, the glass spoon contains only white solid sodium chloride. Now steel wool is ignited in air and quickly inserted into a jar of chlorine. It continues to burn, forming a dense red-brown smoke of iron chloride, FeCl3, which deposits on the side of the jar. When small pieces of antimony metal are dropped into chlorine, we observe sparks as they bounce on the bottom due to the heat of the reaction. We also see a white smoke of antimony trichloride, SbCl3. Ammonium dichromate violently decomposes upon heating, producing chromium-3 oxide, nitrogen gas, water, and heat. The escaping gases help create the volcano appearance of this reaction. Boron trifluoride and ammonia react vigorously. After the carbon disulfide evaporates, the phosphorus reacts explosively with oxygen in the air. Calcium metal and acid form hydrogen gas, which is bubbled through a detergent solution. Watch the bubbles. The thermite reaction is so exothermic that it reaches temperatures near 3,000 degrees Celsius, and it is used for welding iron and steel. Tongs are shown retrieving the iron metal produced. Chromium-6 oxidizes alcohol to an acid, reducing the chromium to chromium-3, which is a green color. Which sample is the alcohol? Chemiluminescence. Here, light is produced by two separate chemical reactions occurring sequentially. The time it takes for the color change depends on the concentrations of the chemicals and the temperature. A clock reaction. The time it takes for the color to change depends on the temperature and the concentrations of the chemicals.
This one is called the Old Nassau Reaction for Princeton University. Concentrated sulfuric acid reacts violently with a sucrose solution. Nylon forms at the interface between the two immiscible solutions. As the nylon is drawn out with the tweezers, more nylon is produced at the interface. The reaction continues until one of the reagents is used up. A diisocyanate reacts with a dialcohol, here colored orange, to form a polyurethane. The final foam may be 20 times the volume of the reactants. Manganese acts as a catalyst causing hydrogen peroxide to break down into water and oxygen.